So today's date is January 26th. And we're continuing handout number one. We're solving quadratics by finding square roots. So just going to look at four examples from that page. The rest you'll be able to work starting with number 14. So write this down, please. Number 14 is 25 X squared plus 10, and that equals 46. So let's talk about our approach to working this problem. First thing we're gonna do is to subtract 10 from both sides. So write that down, please. So we'll get 25x squared equals 46 minus 10, which is 36. I also know from having solved a lot of equations to divide by 25. Be sure you're writing this down. These will cancel. I'll get x squared is equal to 36 over 25, and it's okay to leave it as a fraction. But what I'm going to do is take the square root of both sides. Remember when I do that, it is plus or minus, and I'll get x is equal to... Now, I've got 36 over 25, but actually... That's the same thing as radical 36 over radical 25, meaning that I can just take the square roots of the numerator and the denominator, and since they're perfect squares, my answer will be 6 over 5. And that's the way I want to leave it, so jot that down. Number 16 is 16x squared minus 34, and that equals 15. Alrighty, so I'm going to add 34 to both sides to start out with. That's not a new step, we know to do that. I'll get 16x squared is equal, now it's 15 plus 34, which is 49. Divide both sides by 16. And these will cancel here. So I'm left with x squared equals uh, 49 over 16. Well, we know the next step is to take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 16, 4. So, so it's okay to have a solution. It's an improper fraction. I just want to leave it in that form. That's the simplest way I can write my answer. Now, that brings us to the last section, problems 17 through 24. And 17 through 24 has a couple of big words out from us. It says irrational solutions. And when we started this class off today, we were looking at IXL and we were, you know, we were simplifying uh, radicals. In other words, we were simplifying those square roots. That's what we're going to have to do to these answers. They won't be perfect squares. For example, look at number 19. Number 19 is x squared plus 8 and equals 56. All right, so I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Again, nothing new there. And I'll be left with 
x squared equals now 56 minus 8 is what? 48. And I'll take the square root of both sides. So I'll get x is equal to plus or minus radical 48. Now I know 48 will divide by 4. It'll be 4 times 12. The 12, 2 is also divisible by 4. I want to be sure that I rewrite this as the largest perfect square. Well, if I take 48 and I divide it by 16, it's a pretty large perfect square. Remember, I'm only going to divide it by 4, 9, 16, you know, 25, 36, 49. Well, 49 is too big. Obviously, I'm not going to bother with that. But 48 divided by 16 is 3. So I'm going to rewrite it as 16 times 3, just like what we did with IXL today. Write that down. And so the square root of 16 is 4. So it's plus or minus 4. I still have under the radical sign 3. So that's my answer. Just like what you did today with IXL. You just simplify that radical. And last but not least, number 20. Well, look at it. That's the fourth example I want to share with you today. Number 20 is x squared minus 16 equals 59. Well, I know to add 16 to both sides. And I'll get x squared is equal to 59 plus 16. So jot that down. When I add 59 and 16, I get 75. x squared root of both sides. Remember, my result will be positive and negative, positive or negative. And that means x will be equal to plus or minus radical 75. But we've already determined that 75 is divisible by 25, right? The way I remember that always is there's three quarters and 75 cents, so I know it's a divisible, divisible by 25. So I could rewrite that as x is equal to plus or minus 25 times 3. Square root of 25 is 5, so it's 5 radical 3. So even if my answers are not perfect squares, I can still take the square root of both sides and simplify that answer by simplifying the radical.